Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready? Get ready. It's time for your weekly dose of unembellished banter. One and a half hour of music, politics, and news. Real, raw, intoxicating. This show is definitely not for the weak. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome the hosts of Live with Philip Anthony and Valerie Denise Jones. Hi, welcome to Live with Philip Anthony and Valerie Denise Jones. I hope our wonderful listeners are having a great day. Today is Friday, October 6, 2017, and we will be joined by financial expert Taharka L. Bay to discuss um, how to become financially freedom, excuse me, to discuss how to become financially free and obtain financial freedom. Um, so let me bring in uh, the co-host of this show, the lovely Valerie Denise Jones. How are you doing? I'm good, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about having Mr. L. Bay on because I've got like a slew of questions to ask him, especially regarding student loan and foreclosure. So, yeah, today's going to be a good day. And I do second that motion. So, with that being said, um, listeners, please stay with us because I really feel like you will get a lot of pertinent information to begin your quest to become financially free. Um, So, with that being said, um, we will go to a commercial break, and we will see you on the other side of the break, and when we come back, we will be live with Mr. Tahaka Jones, excuse me, Tahaka L. Bay. Um, we will be live with him speaking in the studio, so I will see you after these messages. It's here now. New 98 Super Premium at the red, white, and blue Ingram sign. Power plus economy at your friendly Ingram oil dealers now. Here's a man that really appreciates that new Ingram power. Take a tip from me, Harlan Hill off the Chicago Bay. I'm a professional plastic saver, and the red, white, and blue Ingram disc is the best catch I ever made. You can get Ingram's new 98 Super Premium gasoline at your friendly Ingram dealers today. This is another forward step by Ingram a company that is producing for the present and planning for the future. Remember, you get power plus economy when you fill your car with Ingram's new 98 Super Premium. Watch for the Ingram sign. Get more gold for your dough with Ingram's new 98 Super Premium at the white Ingram pump with the red top. Get Ingram 98 Platinum Treated Gasoline at these friendly Ingram dealers. We could have tuned the performance suspension of the Cadillac CTS Sport Sedan on any closed course. But we chose the tight punishing turns of Germany's legendary Nürburgring instead. Because at Cadillac, we don't just take corners. We take on the world with a car Motor Trend calls a bold, savvy, uncompromising showpiece. And that Edmunds.com elevates to top tier status. The exhilarating Cadillac CTS Sports Sedan. Now with premium care maintenance standard for four years or 50,000 miles. We don't just make luxury cars. We make Cadillacs. Welcome back to Live with Philip Anthony and Valerie Denise. I am Philip Anthony. And as I stated before the break, we will be joined by financial expert Taharka L. Bay. Um, to um, educate us come financial free. Um, so let's bring in uh, Mr. Bay. Uh, Mr. Bay, are you here with us? Yeah, I'm here with you, uh, brother, right here. How y'all doing today? Good. I'm doing just fine, sir. Um, welcome to the show. Um, can you please give our listeners uh, a little bit about yourself, background, um, just in case they are not familiar with who you are, sir? All right, I'm Tahaka Mane L. Bay. I'm uh, located right here in Jacksonville, Florida, on the uh, East Coast. I am a minister of education for the Moorish American government. 
I specialize in contract law and um, assisting people in uh, being debt free. That's great. That's great. Um, some of our listeners may not be aware, but uh, we are on your platform as well. Um, so I do uh, want to thank you for that, for uh, allowing us to be a part of your platform. Uh, that really means a lot to myself and Valerie Denise. Um, we do appreciate you. So let's get right in, into it. So um, if getting out of debt and staying out of debt were easy, uh, of course everyone would do it. So with over $3.5 trillion in consumer debt that is outstanding, um, it is clearly not the case that, that we are financially free. So um, the first question I have for you, uh, Mr. Elbay, is what, what do you feel is the reason for the debt that we face? Well, I personally feel like um, I can't blame uh, the powers that be and they were forced to tell the truth by law that they did. However, uh, there was no stipulations about how they went about doing it. So what they did was they put the truth uh, about you being free up in the uh, uh, a conspicuous location inside your post office, place, place it up on the wall. And uh, we found a lot of, a lot of places that it existed before it was uh, removed. Uh, it was up higher than the people usually look up. The United States filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1933, and they are currently still in that bankruptcy, which means they came back later on and they issued House Joint Resolution 192, and then they also created House Joint Resolution uh, 192 fight and put it on paper because that was the law. They called for all Americans inside the United States to turn in their gold to help with the war effort. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued uh, paper money uh, that stated on it, pay to the bearer of this note $20 in gold uh, at their discretion and on their request. However, when people began to exercise that by sending in a few of those dollars for a little bit of their gold back, uh, they only receive another piece of paper. Now, once this happened, they made it against the law for you to use gold, which is real money at that time, and silver, for any transactions, private or public. And since that day, they've been pre printing uh, what is commonly referred to as fiat currency, but uh, the information on it has been changed. You can take a magnifying glass and look at it, and you won't see the word gold printed on it anywhere. I mean, I'm sorry, the word money printed on it anyway. If the reason why it is able to remain afloat and being regarded as money is simply because the people believe it is. However, what we are supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be uh, paying for everything by our signature based on the accounts that we have. You have a, a birth certificate, uh, which is a trust. You have a Social Security trust. And uh, the thing is that People simply don't know how they're supposed to live. The Internal Revenue Service is put in a, a position to simply balance the books. If I go to a, a store and they had a wash and dryer that they were selling for $998, uh, in order to keep from giving this history lesson, I give them $988 uh, in cash, and I'm going to need the supervisor to give me a receipt I need them to sign it. I'll sign it and date it, and uh, I'll make a copy of it, and I'll uh, send a copy of that to the Internal Revenue Service to let them know that I put fiat in the public and uh, what their job is to do to map, balance the book and to put this company on notice of the fact that this uh, fiat currency is in the public, and now they need to uh, send that back to me. That's where it's supposed to go. Okay. Um, and, and let me reiterate something that, that I heard you say. Um, 1933, the United States filed bankruptcy. And and to reiterate this is money, the dollar, what we consider the dollar bill right now, what we spend or recycle, um, is not actually real money, correct? That's correct. Okay. So um, a lot of people probably did not know that. Um, like myself, um, I was educated on that, is that um, I didn't know the reason why we're in this rut is because 
1933, this country filed bankruptcy. They made everyone turn in their gold, uh, what I heard you say, and then just gave them a piece of paper, correct? Yes, sir. They issued uh, $20 gold certificates. If you go back and do a history on it, you'll see the actual notes that was released that said pay to the bearer of this note $20 in gold. Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, so me, myself, um, let, let's take myself for, for instance. I don't mind putting my business out there. That's why I'm on the line with you now. Um, my credit is not the best um, card debt. And so I wanted to ask you a question. Um, I have an offer right now to settle my credit card debt for less than half of what I owe. So my question to you, Mr. Uh, L. Bay, um, will it help my credit to settle? Or, or should I pay it by me settling and paying that? Should I even pay it, or should I not pay it? Does it make a di- does it make a difference if I pay uh, the settled amount or if I don't pay it at all? Well, first of all, if we know for a fact, and uh, that the information that I previously gave you a few minutes ago, if we know that and we keep that in our man- mind with every transaction mm-hmm. we make, if they are claiming that you owe them a debt. That is called an offer. That's what it is. Okay. We got to. What we have to do is we got to turn it around. We got to stop looking at it. Oh man, these people calling for that money, man. I owe these people this, and they saying I owe this, that, and the other. Uh, but how could that be possible uh, when the country is currently operating in a bankruptcy and there's no money? So what you have to do is one of three things: you either accept the offer, reject the offer. Or do a counter offer. You understand? Okay, so yes, sir. So with that being said, let me repeat this back to you. Um, in my situation, um, when you do get those letters saying that uh we want to settle, you owe this amount of money, but we'll settle for half or less than half, um, and they offer you that settlement. So what I'm hearing you say is either it's my job to either accept the offer, reject the offer, or counter the offer, correct? That's that's correct. Okay, and so which, which one um, will, will do you recommend? Should I counter the offer? Well, because according to what I'm hearing you say, um, with this country being under bankruptcy and um, they don't have no money, no way, it's in my best interest to just reject the offer. Correct? Well, <clears throat> no, that wouldn't be wise because there are some some other things that we'll be discussing a little, little bit l- later. Uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, do a counter offer, which means okay. we are going to accept your offer mm-hmm. under the conditions that you provide us the correct answers to the truth that we have listed. Mm. In addition to, we need you to rebut this lawful affidavit that's attached to this counter offer within a specific time limit. An unrebutted affidavit stands as true, the law. So we need okay. the counter offer, we need the affidavit, and we're going to need a copy. What you're claiming that we owe We're going to make copies of it Several copies And we're going to send that To you Certified mail will return receipt Which there's nobody uh, In your office that can say that you didn't get it Because you signed for it Correct You see So now what we're looking for Is we're looking for You To prove beyond any shadow of a doubt That what I'm doing is unlawful is wrong, is immoral, and is not true. And we need you to rebut point by point every request I made because I have accepted your offer and I have entered into a contract with you on the counter offer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's cool. So um, when I count, when I make that counter offer, that counter offer should always be for significant, um, a less value, right? A significant less value than what they want me to settle for. No. 
if they are claiming you owe them $10,000, you're bringing mm-hmm. into question $10,000. If they are claiming you owe them $150,000, you're bringing into question $150,000. Okay. So so by, by them saying I owe them, let's say I owe them $150,000, but they say, like I say, they offer the settlement saying that um, – We'll let you pay fifty thousand, okay? They'll let me pay fifty thousand. That's their settlement price. So when I counter offer, that that's what I'm, and I want to make sure I understand this. When I counter offer, that counter offer should not be less than that fifty thousand. Nope, because what what you what you're missing is the fact they are assuming that you owe a debt in the First place, okay, which is an assumption. So what you're saying is they're assuming that I owe that hundred and fifty thousand uh, off the rip, right? Right. Okay. 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 Um, very interesting because, cause, man, um, great information, great information. So, um, Valerie, do you have any questions for Mister Bay? I can't. No, can't we hear. cannot hear. You. No, no, we can't hear you. I'll put it on speaker. Hear. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I hear a lot of yeah, We can hear you very clear. Okay, so this one was like, I fear I can use my headphones up because you guys can't hear me. So I wanted to ask you because your your website advertises new debt elimination. Is that what you? Are suggesting is it is a new debt is a new debt process versus an old process? I I was just kind of confused as to um, you what, know how what, it was. What kind of what what kind of old process are you referring to? That you know new debt new debt elimination meaning something replaced it, correct? Yeah, yeah. This is what replaces is people who woke up. People who woke up. Yeah. Okay. See, we we've been under an impression uh, uh, that we can we supposed to go to a store and uh, 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 give them money without even knowing what we're involved in. You go in the right. store and you give somebody some paper currency, and you standing back and you 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 just want a can of string beans. Uh, you gave them uh, the put the string beans on the counter. You gave them a, a dollar bill, and they rung it up and they gave you a receipt. The most valuable part of the transaction is the receipt because they're going to give you a receipt and they're going to take the other receipt and they're going to uh, 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 get their money back from it. You go to the house with a can of string beans and uh, you just got out of debt, but uh, you're trying to hustle up some more debt to get back in debt again. You, you, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> See, once you, once you understand what's going on, then you know how to play the game. Right. Okay. Well, you also advertise on your website that um, you could teach us how to own our own business. Can you could you help us explore that just a little bit? What kind of businesses were you suggesting? Well, you there are quite quite a few little opportunities that we put there, and that is for people uh, to get in the habit of start working for other people and start. On their own business, we we start with the ABC. Just just go on and on, uh, and, and and just open up and start doing your real stuff. Uh, because now for the first time in your life, you're in business. Uh, you're networking. Uh, you can master how to do that and all that. And then you can go uh, uh look up top on the website, and click on the uh, uh donation page, and over there you have a complete listing of stuff that will give you much more power about how to operate. You can learn how to set up a trust. You can learn how to operate in the private. You can learn how to discharge massive amounts of debt. You can learn how to collapse trust. You can learn how to set up trust. You can learn all of this stuff. Right, yeah. So um, unless Philip has another question regarding the businesses, I would like to continue going through your website because I, I found it to be very, very interesting. 
Philip, do you have any questions regarding how to um, start a business based on the answer he provided? Well, well let, let me ask you, Mr. Bates. Bates. Let, let me ask, go ahead. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Bates. Uh, speaking on the trust, um, is it better to have a trust than a will? Yes, it is. Let me give you my latest project. And y'all sit back for a minute. I want to give this to you. We got uh, uh, Kaepernick up in the NFL uh, taking a knee. Mm-hmm. But I formulate a plan, and this is my plan. Okay. Instead of taking a knee, I need 20 men from the NBA. I need 20 men from the NFL. Now, I want all of these men to currently be under contract and professionals that everybody, uh, the general public, knows something about. I'm going to need 10 men and 10 women from the hip-hop industry. We're going to formulate what's called an irrevocable common law trust, the most powerful trust on this planet. We got grannies, we got trustees, we got trust protectors, we got trust managers, and we're going to use the uh, 10 women from the uh, hip-hop industry along with 10 men from there to be the secretaries, and all of this is going to be in regards and on behalf of the beneficiaries of this trust. Now, this particular trust is a private trust. It's not to be registered with any uh, government agencies or any corporate agencies or anything like that. The primary objective of forming this particular trust is for people who look like me to create their own franchise, their own stadiums, and their own police precincts and put this thing in their own communities and provide protection and revenue uh, for an industry that they created for the first time, well, not the first time in in the history of this country because we do have Elijah Muhammad that has done the same thing. But um, uh, right now, while you got the money, you can do this, and this is the machine that you want to use and do this with. It's perfectly legal. Everybody going to hit the fan, but uh, with these kind of people and uh, ex-players and uh, finance and stuff, they can back you up and uh, do what they got to do to make sure this thing materializes in real life. That's what I'm talking about. That sounds great. That sounds great. (laughs) Good. That's that's the plan. I want to keep going um, because – I was uh, very interested in, in the portion of your webpage that talked about nationality. It says proclaim your nationality. Learn brand new skills as it relates to freedom of right to travel without a driver's license or registration. So I, w- I just kind of wanted to explore that for a quick sec because, I mean, I do travel a lot, and I wanted to know what you meant, and then we'll spill over into teaching our kids culture based on, on that answer. Okay, you're talking about two different things. You're talking about nationality, and you're talking about contract law again. So I'll take them one at a time. Uh-huh. Okay. You said nationality. Let us, let us use a little common sense for a minute. Everybody on the planet has a nationality. Mm-hmm. And that nationality just happens to be associated with a land mass. You got Chinese people, they're associated with a land called China. You got Japanese people, they're associated with a land called Japanese. You got the Afghanis, that's associated with a land called Afghanistan. You got Cubans that's associated with Cuba. You got Mexicans associated with Mexico. You got Puerto Ricans associated with uh, Puerto Rico. So now we got a problem because where is black land? Where is African American land? Where is Negro land? Where is colored land? How could it be colored people, black people, African American people, and Negroes? Where is white land? Where is uh, 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 all these people land? How are we going to have Indians being labeled as natives of the land when we got India and the people on that land are labeled as Indians? What do you think about that? That's deep. 
<laughs> that really is cute. Right. So you said proclaim your nationality. Okay. So how do we proclaim our nationality? Well, on my website at NewDateElimination.com, there is a link there. Uh, this link is the Moorish American Government dot land. When you click on that link, you will be taken to that website. It's an external website. You'll go there, and you'll see these little circles come up across the page that says love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. When you put your mouse over freedom and let it sit there, a little drop-down menu will come down. It says registration. You click on that. And you go to the registration form, and this is an opportunity for you to uh, add your title, your real name, that's associated with your own culture for the first time. So before you go there, make sure you got something to put there. You can add your children, and at the bottom of that page is a conference call number, the time that it happens, and the uh, access code. And you can dial in there and find out where there are other people in your location that you can associate with that uh, are Moors just like you. Now, in order for us to fully understand this, we're going to have to do some research. When I say Moor, uh, what's that? If I say Egyptian, what's that? How do I know for a fact uh, that's what I am and where's my land? Well, all that's been covered up for you. Your land stretches from the north and southwestern shores of Africa, the entire Atlantic Ocean, north, central, and South America, and all adjoining islands. That's your land. That's on contract, and it's located right there in Geneva, Switzerland. Mm. Does, does that help you out a little bit? That does, yeah. It definitely does. So do you have anything? Cause I, I, yeah, I so I'm... I'm yeah, um, I just want to, I just want to, and 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 uh, ask him a question on this. Um, I did click on the link uh, while you were talking, and I'm here on the website now. And as I scroll down, I'm, I'm looking at acts, and I see articles. Now, um, are these acts and articles of the United States or of the Moorish, uh, Moorish teaching? That that belongs to your government. If you're gonna okay. if you're gonna register an identity, you register that with your identity. That puts it in the private. That 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 coincides with your nationality. The only thing that you need from there is to know everything you could possibly know about your own self. Okay. And so basically, you will know, by me reading. So by so by me reading the Vienna Convention of Diplomatic Relations, um, I I need to learn myself first before I enter these articles or, or seem to explore you can these read, articles. You can read right? you can read anything you you can read everything over there if you want to, but what I recommend, uh, and, and let me say this this is this is my greatest recommendation to anybody, uh, inside the United States that looks like me and uh, that doesn't have anything to do with racism. It's just my philosophy that my people come first on earth and everybody else comes second. And the reason why, because that's always the way it has always been. The oldest people on the planet look like me. The oldest finds in this hemisphere look like me, dating back to well over 200,000 years right down there in Brazil. I live in uh, Florida, 40 miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean is a 400-foot-high pyramid. Our civilization goes under the Atlantic Ocean all the way down to Bimini and all the way over to Cuba. All of this is covered up. Our temples and mummies mm. and artifacts are still in the Grand Canyon. The mounds in Louisiana has already been dated by the United Nations as the oldest civilization on the planet predating the royal families of Egypt. So, so Mr. Tahaka, I look like you. Um, um, I, I am of your people. So, with that being said, um, where where can I go to begin these studies? To begin to learn who I truly am? To begin to get my piece of, of, of the land? To get my land? Uh, which you say is, is is all of Africa, and anything that connects to it. Um, so so where can I begin to educate myself 
on who I really am. All right. Well, the, the best thing to do uh, is uh, right there on the website where you are, if you look down at the bottom of the page, you'll see uh, the uh, uh, calling number to the national conference calls that are held seven days a week by the Moorish government in the access code. They start at 645 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you listen because in, in order for you uh, to be a Moor, uh, you have to be taught by a Moor. You cannot go to any college or university inside the United States. I don't care how many uh, master's degrees or bachelor's degrees to give you. Uh, it is not possible for them to educate you because they cannot tell you about self. They do not have this kind of power. They don't have that kind of information to impart to you. So the only thing that you can get is a head full of information and think you got some sense until you run into somebody like me. That's that's the best mm. answer that I can give you. So is, is this number you speaking on the nine zero four three zero three nine zero six one number? That's my that's my telephone number. If you scroll down to the if you're on the Moorish government website, scroll down to the bottom of the page. Mm-hmm. You see the numbers down there? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. All the way to the bottom. Moorish government. Da 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 da. Okay. Okay. Yes, I see it now. I see it now. Yes, I see it now. Now the second thing that you have to do is and and um, and, and so and so just just to let you know I'm where you are so you so you know that I'm following you. Um that's that seven one two seven seven zero four seven three three number, correct? Mm-hmm. You see the access code? Okay. Yes, yes, I have the access code. I see that as well. All right. Now, the second thing okay. that you need to do, second thing, is you're going to have to uh, start investing in power. Power is knowledge. And the first type of power you're going to have to invest in is knowledge of self. So you want to get certain books, and you want to do your research in the books so you can come to the conclusion, and you'll be able to stand before kings and queens. And uh, you probably won't even have to tell them, who you are, and when you walk in, they'll probably start moving to the side, but you, you will know, and then you'll be able to tell any man, regardless of who or what he think he is, who is the rightful owner of this land. Well, that that's very interesting. Um, Valerie, Denise, do you have anything uh, for Mr. Tahaka? Well, yeah, I just keep, I want to just keep moving and exploring the website so when people go to it, um, they'll have a full explanation as to what each part of uh, the website, um, what it means, because there are like a slew of features on there. So I want you to um, talk to us a little bit about the freedom of right to travel without a driver's license or registration, if you could explain that. Okay, all that comes under... uh... Uh, a, a contract law, and I, I use this system because I found out that uh, what I'm telling you all now, a lot of my people don't know it, and it, I don't get a chance to uh, explain it to them in detail. So I took the next best thing that would attract them enough so I can get the majority of the people to listen. Everything in the United States operates on a continuous series of contracts under what I call contract law. Everything. You go in back in the grocery store, you go get the screen beans, you put it on the counter, you give them a piece of paper, and they do the transaction through the computer. They give you a receipt, and you just entered and exited a contract. You cannot do anything in the United States without a contract. You cannot go to jail without signing a contract. Your fingerprints on a contract. You can't get out of jail without signing a contract. You can't uh, die and be buried in a cemetery without somebody signing contracts. Everything is is operated by contract. If somebody comes to you and says, well, look, I'd like to enter into a verbal uh, contract with you, uh, that ain't worth a heel of bean. You need it in writing. Because if there's no evidence, you have no case. Now, when it comes to your right to travel, 
That's what you were born with. You were born to move about and have your being, and especially on your land. But because of the system that's in place, you need to formulate certain contracts. Now, there are photographs of me uh, with license plates on the back of my truck and, and ID that I created in my hand that contains the law. Now, we got two different things in the United States. We got legal and illegal. And then we have the law. There's two different things. We got the law and we got what's commonly referred to as legal and le illegal, which is masquerading as law and being called law, but it has absolutely nothing to do with law because law coincides with nature. Illegal and legal deals with statutes and ordinances, and that's exactly what they are, rules and regulations of statutes and ordinances that have nothing to do with law. And that's what we are victim of today. It's in the financial industry, it's in economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. That's what's going on. So when it comes to your right to travel, what we want to do is we want to put the proper contracts in place, put everybody on notice that need to be put on notice about what our intentions are, and make them liable to be sued in the event that our right to do what we were born to do is infringed upon. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir, I do. I want to just spit fire some, some topics because they are addressed on your website. So child support, you put that on your website. Can you, can you give me a few sentences regarding child support, what you wanted to want the people to know? Well, that's on the same thing. Child support, student loans. Uh, the whole ball of wax, uh, all of it about contract. It is all so you're basically talking about the paper. Okay, so I, I, I see where you're going now regarding um, the website and, and how to actually navigate um, through it because there's a video on your page that um, it was titled The Power of Paper by Jerry Day. So you're kind of uh -huh. giving up. It basically, he talked about the instruments of tyranny, smart versus stupid tyranny. So that's basically what, what you're saying. Um, we shouldn't look that far into it um, as it relates to maybe social issues or political issues or, or, or certain things. We kind of need to um, to exegete it in such a way where it all paths lead back to the paper, to the paper trail is, is well, that the case? Well, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are on the planet. Uh, you had to go to uh, very, very remote cultures to uh, get away from the uh, paper game. But uh, for the most part, most of where you go on the planet, especially in the major uh, countries, uh, uh, they're, they're still playing the same game with contracts. Uh, in order for you to play the game, you have to master the tools. Now, Jerry Day, what he's talking about, is one of the most powerful tools uh, to be used in the game. He's talking about uh, an affidavit. Uh, they put that there so that you'll be able to, uh, or well, they, the creators will be able to use that in order to uh, t uh, uh, take things from people, uh, control situations and stuff of this nature. Well, uh, then they, then they uh, say, oh, okay, well, we, we, you know, that looks like a good one. I'll take that and use that for myself. So um, you want to be able to formulate that and use it when you need to use that. That's just the tool. See, this, this game that we're talking about is huge. And these are small tools that you use to set yourself free. So I have one more question, Philip. And then, um, if you don't mind, I think Daryl uh, from Team DLW Unity Movement is also on the phone. So if you want to bring him in um, after this question. So I... Can I also ask you, um, and I hope that I'm, I'm understanding this. I don't mean to keep seeming to appear like I, I am questioning what you're saying. I just wanted to make sure I get a good understanding. Because when I was on your page, I found several topics that I really, really, truly wanted to talk to you about because I wanted to explore them, the first being like student loans. So when you talk about student loans, you're talking about the paper trail. You're not necessarily telling me how to um, – 
lower student loans as it relates to the interest rates or how I can get free education or make college affordable. <laughs> Wait, why are you okay, let, let's go at this here this way. Okay, you we're going to say that uh, you you want to go back to school. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You don't you, you don't know that uh, you, it's impossible for you to get education inside the United States. You don't know that. Uh, so you're going to go back to school, and uh, you see this advertisement uh, for a student loan. We, we're offering you a student loan. You go ahead and sign up for it. And uh, they say, well, congratulations, uh, your application, the word application now, because we're going to have to find the words, uh, has been accepted, and your student loan has been granted. So you go there, uh, you uh, uh, haven't been, uh, you, you don't give them no money. Uh, you go in there and you go through the classes and stuff, and then all of a sudden, right before you get out of school, uh, there's a check, uh, I mean a, a, a letter coming to your house with an invoice in it uh, for $1,500. And then they're telling you, you know, it's only going, it's going to drop down to, Seven hundred dollars a month. Well, you you ain't even got out of school yet. You in your mind, you you ain't even got a job to even start paying for your uh, baby's pampers. But here you these checks. So uh, invoices. So my question to you at this point is: They said they were going to give you a loan to go to school. When did you get the check? Come on, you might be quiet over there. When did they I, send I you the check? Quiet. You said when did I when when do I cash the check? Is that what you said? When did they send you the check? Oh, they sent me the check uh, prior to me getting an education, correct? How much did they give you? Did you have you a student loan? Said, did I have a student me meaning me, Valerie? Yeah. No, I, I did not. Actually, um, I was fortunate enough. All right, to well, let's, let's, let's ask, let's go, go ask any of your friends that went for that. Just ask them if they uh, 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 told them that they, 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 they got the loan. We, we have approved your, the loan has been approved, and your classes did that and the other. Ask them when did the people that was offering this send them to check. They said the they said the prior to you actually taking the courses. I know that for a fact because I, 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 my brother, you know, would receive checks before he purchased books or he was able to, to um, you know, select a class. Half the time uh-huh. uh, he got it prior to, uh, you know, even figuring out what he wanted to major or what he wanted his minor to be. He hadn't even uh-huh. um, looked at the curriculum before um you know, uh, uh, the check was cut, so sometimes he spent it on something else other than education. So if that's what you're asking. See, my whole point of, of asking the questions is not so much um, for it to benefit me because I know what behooves me, right? But I, because I, I didn't do it a traditional way, but I wanted to, for those, you know, people who are listening, if you had certain ways, again, like uh, President Obama and former President Obama, or Donald, Donald Trump did when they were on their political trail, and they were talking about, you know, the benefits and, and you know, um, student loans versus, uh, like, a private lender, you know, uh, interest rates and, and things such as that. I thought maybe you could help us explore that so that we could educate the listeners. Well, we so have. They would know we, what to do and what not to do. Yeah, that's, that's the, reason I, the reason I put that that way, the way I said it, is because we have – Hundreds of thousands of people across the United States that were told that they got the loan to go to school. And they were told to, to go to school. They went to school. And then out of the clear blue sky, they got an invoice. So my question is, well, when did you get the check? Well, I never received a check. Okay, you have private institutions that saying that we're going to uh, cut you a check. Okay. And uh, we need you to pay this back. So at this point, are you asking me to give you something that belongs to the 
Federal Reserve Bank, property belonging to somebody else, or are you asking me to give you money? Which one? See, if you understand that there is no money, and all of everything that's inside America that exists, it is us who pay for it. We are not responsible for the deficit. The people who created the system, they're the ones that are responsible for the de- deficit. Everything is this because we we do. So uh, story if they're short, taxing you, you, you're accepting them to, to, to do that. Long story short, your your website basically suggests, is, uh, would, they be, would these be Morris traditions versus no, other, any other No, that's just contract law. That's, contract that's just law. contract okay. law. No. Gotcha. Now, when you okay. start dealing with this stuff from a Moorish position, that's a whole different ball game. Okay. Mm. Daryl well, we or uh, Philip, you know? Right. We, we have a guest. Uh, Daryl, are you with us? Yes, I am. Good afternoon. How's everybody? Good. Yes, uh, uh, going so good. here today is, is Mr. Um, Sahaka L. Day, he's a financial expert. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, it, it, it's, it's ironic that you guys start talking about education because my thought was um, I was having a conversation with someone earlier today in terms of homeschooling. And as African Americans, black folks in America, um, we have been. Uh, pretty much as as young adults, uh, teenagers, uh, a lot of the truths of our people have been, in our history, have been kept from us. You know, in order for us to learn more about our heritage and our ancestors, we had to find those things out on our own. They were not taught in, in uh, public schools. So my thought is... Um, what does your guest think about homeschooling in terms of teaching our younger our, our younger generation, our children, about their heritage and their ancestors at a young age through homeschooling since they're not getting it through uh, some charter schools and public schools? Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, that is an excellent question. My brother, and uh, I'm going to answer this as correctly as I can. You're talking about uh, one of the most powerful movements on the planet when it comes to our people. And uh, it is very, very uh, uh, dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Because when you're talking about education, you have to understand one thing. It is impossible for you to get an education inside the United States if you're not beginning with knowledge of self and your ancient culture and your ancient story. That's the first thing we have to deal with before we get to the ABC. So when we talking about homeschooling our children, the first question mom and dad is going to have to answer is, are we equipped to do this? Have we invested in uh, the library that we're going to pull it off with? Have we invested our time in coming to a conclusion about the most important questions that ever be, could be answered uh, in order to do this with our children. Because uh, within the first couple of years, the only thing that we need to be teaching them is about who they are before we get to the ABCs, uh, reading, writing, and arithmetic, uh, and what they're going to start teaching them in school. So once they do go into any kind of school system, with the private school system, they walk through the door uh, invincible. So that's the first step because I, I hear that often. Uh, we it roll off our lips. Well, I, I homeschool my children. Well, what kind of schooling is you putting in there? What you telling them? What kind of what kind of power are you are you using? What you what you working with? What you what you telling them? The reason I'm, I'm saying that because there was a situation where this woman, uh, she was a school teacher. 
and she had these little children, and the question that she asked all the children is, who is your role model? And all the children, a lot of them said, well, they were Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan. And, and, and they went on and on and on. And finally, one little boy, he said, my mom and my daddy. The teacher dropped her books. He said, your mom and your daddy is your role model? He said, yes, ma'am. He said, okay. And uh, after school, she went down to the principal office to find out where that, where that boy lived at and where his phone number at because I need to call his mom and daddy. And she said she couldn't sleep at night. And she said she tried not to call him, but she had no choice. She said, I need to come over there and sit down and talk with y'all. Because uh, everybody said uh, uh, somebody else was their role model. But uh, this, he said y'all was his role model. I want you to tell me what is it that you are doing that nobody else in this school is doing to get your son to regurgitate what everybody supposed to be saying. And it's Told him. His dad was a truck driver. His mama said, uh, uh, come here. And he took her in there and showed her uh, the walls around her room with books on her, her culture, and history, economics, mathematics, uh, silver and gold, and you name it. it was right there, she said, this is what I'm teaching. She said, okay. She said, I understand now. She said, you know what? She said, I ain't got none of this at my house. <laughs> and they don't teach none of this where I work at. <laughs> she said, well, all right, maybe you need to uh, start doing some changes. But that's my answer to your question, brother. Hey, so I want to I wanna ask you, uh, Mr. Bay, while we're on the topic of education, um, being that you have stated that um, so many of our people are not woke, um, they still, I guess, in the unconscious state. Um, what are you doing to um, enlighten the people? Um, and, 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 and let me ask you this. And what you're doing, um, does it come as a C? Or are you teaching this just because you want to see your people come out of a conscious, uh, unconscious state? My reason for doing what I'm doing and everything that I'm doing is to make sure that my people not only come out of a conscious, unconscious state, but to actually physically do something to change their circumstances. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I don't have a whole lot of more years left on the planet. So I got to stop talking about the problem and start formulating the solution. So today, that's why I gave you my solution to the problem of the NFL. So whenever there's a problem or arise, what we need to be doing is uh, going down and, and sit down. Let me let me go ahead and put a solution to this right here. Uh, you got your books right there. Go ahead and pull them off the shelf and uh, formulate this thing. It's not going to take you very long. So when you start talking, you're only talking about the solution. So we, we, we talk right. about the problem seven days a week and all day long, but what are we going to do about it? That's when you come in. Okay. Here on my plan. Okay. And this so, is my plan. Right. Right, and when you say that plan, that thing, that thing you're talking about is that private trust that that, that you um, just talked about earlier in the show when you said you want people to create, our people to create their own franchises. That's when you talked about 20 men from the NBA, 20 men from the there NFL, 10 men, okay, 10 men uh, from the hip-hop industry and 10 women from the uh, hip-hop industry, and you were going to have them on the board, so to say, to run it, correct? They're the ones that's going to formulate the trust. But now, since y'all okay. have heard me, you evaluate what I need you to do, bro. I need you to be in charge of decoration outside the stadium. Valerie, you be in charge of uh, presenting all the artwork inside the stadium. How about that? Well, see, my, my, my thing would be, in, in order for me to do that, I must first educate myself. That's why I asked you that question. If I wanted to educate myself on where I'm from, because technically I would consider myself to be in an unconscious state, being that I don't know much about the Moors' teachings. So I would consider myself to be in an unconscious state. So if I wanted to wake up and start walking in what I'm uh, supposed to be walking in, that, that my people before me had walked in, do you provide that teaching to me for free? That's what I'm asking. Will you will you, you bring do me out I of provide my that teaching to you? Free? 
Yeah, of course I do. Okay. Uh, you got a pill okay. and paper? Yes, sir. It, 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 write down this. Noble Drew Ali, the exhuming of a nation. Noble Drew Ali, correct? That's correct. Okay. The exhuming and, and of a nation. The title? The exhuming of a nation. Noble Drew Ali, the exhuming of a nation. Okay, the exhuming of a nation. Yeah. Okay. Then Noble write down. Drew Ali, the exhuming of a nation. Yeah. Then write down the Iceman inheritance. Michael Bradley. Okay. Now, then write down. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Write down uh, the Moors in Spain. Stanley Lane Pool. The Moors in Spain. Okay, so let me let, let, let me repeat back what I have so far. I have the exhuming okay. of a nation by Noble Drew Ali. I have the Iceman Inheritance by Michael Bradley, and then I have the Moors in Spain by Stanley L. Poole. Right. Now, let's get When Rocks Cry Out, Horace Butler. Okay. And then the last one I'm going to give you, because I don't want to overwhelm you, I want you to come to a conclusion. And that is, they came before Columbus, Ivan Van Sertima. Ivan Van Van Sertima. Uh, S-E-R-T-I-M-A, Sertima. Okay, Ivan Van Sertima. They came before Columbus. So you said you didn't want right. to overwhelm me, but you just gave me five books. I bet they all over 100 pages, ain't it? Oh, the human uh, <laughs> of a nation. Is, 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 you got, you, you, I'm going to give you uh, 30 days on that by yourself, just on that alone. Okay. Oh, I got to give you one more because I might as well go ahead and give you uh, the other side of you, I'm going to go ahead and give you this, uh, of Water and the Spirit by Maladoma Patrice Somme. Now, you got to spell that. <laughs> of Water and the Spirit. I know you got that part. Right. No, I got, I got that. I got Maladoma, M-A-L-A-D-O-M-A, and what's the rest of that? Patrice. Okay. So me, S O, so me, S O M E hyphen over the E. Okay. All right. Maladoma Patrice So me, S O M E and the accent mark over the uh, E. Wow. So um, man, I I, I didn't wrote down all these books. I have wrote down and took a lot of notes. Now I see that I have some research to do. Um, Valerie, do you have anything else for? Mr. Tahaka L. Bay. Well, we've only got about five more minutes of the show, and I definitely wanted to make sure that I, I told Mr. Bay that I definitely appreciate you as an elder because we need more elders to reach out to the young people and educate them because I haven't a clue what is going on in the minds of our, of our young people. They seem to lack uh, uh, respect for authority, so I'm sitting here with pen and paper and I, too, am writing down certain things, and, and I also visited uh, certain websites and, and Googled some of the people that you mentioned. So I definitely appreciate the education that you've given us today, and we'll definitely um, continue to talk to you on the other side. But um, I don't know that uh, I think we've got about about five minutes. And, and, again, I just wanted to, because this was, this was a big deal for a lot of young people, um, to ask you about the legal advice that you provide on the website and how does that 
relate to legal shield? I mean, how do they play into it? Because I know a little yet a lot about legal shield itself. So could you help us uh, wrap the show by telling sure. us a little bit about uh, that? Yeah. Uh, you remember I told you uh, there's a difference between legal and lawful. I don't give out legal advice. Um, I'm not a lawyer because I never told you I was a chump. But what you want to use um, uh, any type of legal advice for is uh, questions only. If you mess around and don't shut it down and end up uh, up in this man's uh, courthouse, this is what you got to understand. Uh, there haven't been laws, uh, any laws in the United States prior to 1932. Uh, they, you know, the legal uh, and illegal it doesn't have anything to do with law. What you're dealing with, commerce. That's it. If, 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 if I'm arrested, and when they, you know, I go to jail, or you got to go before the judge, where the judge said, well, you, uh, you, you did this, and you did this, and uh, uh, we're going to find you. Uh, uh, such, 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 and we need to know how do you plead Well judge I'm not here to enter in a plea Because I'm not a part of your society uh, I need to know What the contract has so I can uh, Sell the tax matter Because this has everything to do with commerce uh, You you, uh, you are mm-hmm. uh, an administrative Employee uh, you ain't no judge We're in an administrative office You know a lot of people Might have it confused but I'm not one of them so what I need you to do is give me the document so I can go ahead and sell the tank, madam, go and buy my business. It's important mm-hmm. for you to know who you are and to understand the system that's uh, surrounding you. And the only way you're going to do it is you're going to have to do the research. You can go to seminars all you want. You can dial into blog talks all you want and until you start dealing with reading, writing, and arithmetic, you ain't going to be able to put it off. Legal Shield so, um, is there for people who think they need a lawyer. But even when they go there, I tell them, look, you know, when you get there, you, you just got questions on it because you're already in the muck of the muck. Uh, so go ahead and ask them uh, about the legal procedure so you can use it and uh, 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 get up out of it. So so basically it goes back to what you said earlier. Legal and illegal are just masquerading as law. That's um, correct. They run off statutes and ordinances. And law right. coincides with nature, meaning that That's correct. we did not have any law prior to 1932. Yeah, that's correct. There haven't been any laws in the United States. That's why they are uh, uh, doing whatever they want to do. You know, they are uh, uh, shooting you down in the streets and going up in a, uh, what they're calling a courthouse and saying they're not guilty and all kind of crap going on. This is a lawless society. They got to keep a lid on it now because they know what happened last time uh, in the West and, and it didn't last but 30 years, but they give you all these Westerns and all this kind of uh, garbage, which is, which is wrong because the majority of the real cowboys are people who look like you. Uh, 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 you, you, you uh, when you're approached by a man with a gun, your life is in danger. Right. If you got a woman and children, right. uh, you got to protect her. Right. So, Mr. Bay, um, I, I don't want to cut you short because this is this, and our show is coming to an end because this is some great information. I know me personally, I will be getting with you here in the future behind the scenes, uh, and I will uh, start researching some of these books, some of these authors. But before we let you get out of here, um, please, please tell the people um, if they really enjoy uh, your 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 um, your knowledge what you share uh, with us on this show. Please tell us how we can find you, how the people can contact you. Please give out your contact information, your social media, if you're on social media, and the website. You have it. Okay. You're on the switchboard. Just uh, go up to the top of the switchboard and just click on the commercials. That's it. I'm at uh, newdateillumination.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook, on all the social media. Uh, I'm on other people's network. I host my own show periodically. And uh, all you got to do 
uh, to get up, get the skinny on me, just type in T A R H A K A into Google, and just go through everything you see. Everything is there. That's it. Okay. Well, um, Mr. Bell, I do appreciate you being here. I do appreciate you uh, sharing all this knowledge with us. Um, for all those, uh, if you wanted to go to the website yourself, that website for Mr. Tahaka L. Bay is new, N-E-W, debt, D-E-B-T, elimination, E-L-I-M-I-N-A-T-I-O-N.com. That's new debt elimination. Dot com. Uh, he does have a lot of links on there, a lot of informative links, and he does have a lot of videos. Once again, Mr. Bay, I thank you for joining us today. I do thank you uh, for this platform. Before you get out of here, Valerie, do you have anything for Mr. Bay? No, again, I think you guys have wrapped everything up. Um, but, Mr. Bay, I, I, God, it was a blessing, and I appreciate you. And I'm thankful that you agreed to stop by and also that you – allow us to do what we do on your platform. So thank you so much. Um, and like I said, I will be, I will see you on the other side because I have a ton of questions. Thank you to uh, okay. Daryl, who was, who was on hold and who listened to the show. He, he uh, sent some powerful comments and text messages, which, again, I will share with you later. Okay. Well, with that being said, uh, that was Mr. Tahaka Bay. And, um, commercial break right now um so we'll be right back after these messages we're live with philip anthony and valerie denise see you after the break well oscar auto the loquacious limousine and in top form sure Arlo, and it's because i'm equipped with an auto light electrical system now ah, then you must have an auto light starting motor generator battery coil distributor and a set of auto light spark plugs plus all the other important parts that go to make up the complete Autolite electrical system used as original equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. Oh, you bet I do, Arnold. That means every unit and component part of your Autolite electrical system is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give the smoothest performance money can buy. That's why my owner always insists on Autolite Original Factory Parts. And friends, you'll find it pays to insist on Autolite Original Factory Parts for your Autolite equipped car. Because from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. JRR Studios specializes in turnkey video, photo, and TV production services. Call 813-384-8502. Welcome back to Live with Philip Anthony and Valerie Denise. Uh, We were joined by Mr. Tahaka Bay uh, earlier in the show, and he shared a lot of information with us. Um, So I want to ask my co-host now, uh, Ms. Valerie Denise Jones, hey, what did you feel about that show? Well, um, as I mentioned, um, I really appreciate hearing from my elders because it's important. I I don't know what we would do without them, and I wish more of them would speak up and um, talk to the young adults versus fear them. (laughs) I totally understand, uh, you know, their disposition regarding, you know, the direction young people are going today. But, yeah, I mean, just just listening to him um, share what he shared and and, and just – all the knowledge he had regarding certain things. I must admit, I came into the interview thinking I was going to get something else because I had all these questions about foreclosure and gentrification and, you know, student loans and, and all this other stuff. And then he took it a whole another direction, but he definitely didn't leave a stone unturned, which I appreciate that. And I forgot to ask him, was he ever a preacher? Because it was like, there was some moments where it was like, I wanted to say amen or, you know, something. Like I used to do when I was, at, you know, in church, because yeah, he was definitely right. schooling us and putting us in our place. But we we needed that. I needed that uh, that jolt, you know, of energy. Um, and and I'm definitely going to share a lot of the information with a lot of people that I know. You had some good questions too, which is really good. I like how you um, engaged him and and was able to to get a lot of uh, information um, 
out of him regarding the website. So that was fun. Well, one of the most well, one of the most powerful statements I wanted to revisit that he said is, in order for us to really know who we are, we must first start investing in power. And so mm-hmm. he gave the first step. He gave the first step uh, to invest in power, and that's having knowledge of self, so you'll be able to stand before kings and queens. And and, and I I like the analogy he used. He said. And, and they'll know because when you come, you they'll know you're a king or a queen because when you come, they'll start parting like the Red Sea. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's power. That, that That's power. For you to walk in a room and people just look at you and see you about your business and just start moving out your way. So, so and, and, and that that was very powerful to me, which really made me start asking him, um, how how do we become more knowledgeable? How do we wake up? How do we get up out the unconscious state? And so uh, I want to uh, reiterate on the books and titles uh, that he gave. Uh, he gave The Exhuming of a Nation uh, by Noble Drew Ali. He also gave The Iceman Inheritance by Michael Bradley. Uh, he gave The Moors in Spain by Stanley L. Poole. Uh, when Locks Cry Out by Horace Butler. They Came Before Columbus by Ivan Van, I think that's Satuma. And Off Waters and the Spirit by Melodoma Patrice Somme. So um, those are books that he gave out. Those were six books. And, and he stated that with the exhuming of a nation, that'll take you about 30 days to read by itself. So one thing I do um, appreciate is that not only did he give knowledge, but he gave sources that you can go to and uh, educate yourself, read yourself, to start enlightening uh, art yourself about your culture and who you really are. So I, I really thank Mr. Taharka Bay for coming by and uh, sharing that. I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, so I appreciate right it. Now, that wraps it up yes, for me. Yes. So I'm going to uh, step out and, and let you do your thing. And again, this was a very, very wonderful show. Um, so if anybody needs to reach me, my website is ValerieDeniseJones.com. Again, that's ValerieDeniseJones.com. And I will see you next week, same time, same place, here on Fridays at 4 p.m. on this Blog Talk station. So, Philip, so take it from here. It was a good show. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. Uh, That was the lovely Valerie Denise Jones, uh, the host of Live with Philip Anthony and Valerie Denise. Now, uh, what we're about to get into now, um, you've been hearing from Philip Anthony, and that's who you've been listening to. So I have an alter ego, a pseudonym, whatever you want to refer to him as. An angry man. So right now we're about to get into the angry man antics, and I just want to just bring to you all, I just want to bring you all uh, some of my thoughts that um, I really don't get into during uh, the interviews because I do want to be respectful to our guests. So with that being said, uh, let's get into angry man, and you all will be, uh, please expect a a show from angry man, some, some type of show from angry man. Um, so here we go. Now, things I want to address right now uh, is we had Mr. Taharka Bay on, and he gave us a lot of very uh, enlightening uh, things. Um, he shared knowledge with us. And so um, according to, to the teaching I got, we are living a lot. And, and it's a damn shame that, that we live uh, in this country uh, not knowing who we are. And and, and, and it really pisses me off um, because as I listened to Mr. Tahaka uh, talk, it made me realize how far behind my black ass is. Um, so let, let, let me hit on some key topics. Um, it's a lot of shit that go on in this country uh, that, that hurts us as, as, as people of color. 
Um, I wouldn't just say black people because Latinos go through it, uh, any people of color. This system was designed to set us back, and, and Mr. Tahaka touched on that. Um, let's talk about this jail system. Let's talk about how this jail system is. Um, it started with uh, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon uh, passed laws uh, to, to do a sweep of people of color. Um, and it started locking us up by the time when we started filling up these prisons. We didn't know no better. Uh, according to Mr. Tahaka, uh, what he said today is it's all about commerce. It's all about a piece of fucking paper. It's a fucking contract. You sign a goddamn contract to turn yourself into jail, and you got to sign the contract to be free. And, and that's a damn shame um, that, that, that we are in such an ignorant state that we allow these things to happen. Now, um, my co-host, uh, Valerie Denise Jones, uh, she stated that she appreciate the elders. Um, at this moment in my life, I appreciate them too because now I have something to look forward to. Instead of focusing on all the goddamn garbage, all the lies that they put on the news that they want you to see all this bullshit that they put on there about our people, the news is full of shit about our people, about what we do. Uh, they paint us pictures as we the most criminalistic motherfuckers walking the face of the earth, and I feel like that's bullshit. So now I have something to look forward to. I have some homework to do, especially with the books. And I'm going to repeat these books again because cause people need to hear this. So, so, so let me go down these books again. The Exhuming of a Nation by Noble Drew Ali. The Iceman Inheritance by Michael Bradley. The Moors in, the Moors in Spain by Stanley L. Poole. When Locks Cry Out, Horace Butler, They Came Before Columbus, Ivan Van Sertuma, and I and if I screwed that name up, forgive me. I think it's Sertuma or Sertima, whatever it is, and Off Water and the Spirit. Oh, excuse me, of Water and the Spirit, Melodoma Patrice Soma. So these are things that, that, that I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to reading these books, to educate myself, to enlighten myself, and just read them. Um, whether they will have an impact on my life or not is yet to be determined because I have not done my homework yet. I have not done my research yet. So once I do, then I will be sharing some of these things with you on previous shows, uh, on shows to come in the future. But um, let's get back to what I was saying. I was talking about... Nixon at first, how he put laws, how this country put laws in uh, in place. And, 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 and I won't even say laws because laws, according to Mr. Tahasa, and, I, and, and it's beautiful because I get to look this stuff up and research, laws coincide with nature. Nature has nothing to do with this, with this country. Law is law. It's nature. Something that was here existed before we even got here is law. Coincides with nature There was no such thing as a Law prior to 1932 So once again Legal and illegal Is masquerading As law Legal and legal is just masquerading as law Um, It's nothing But statutes and ordinances And that's what Keeps us in the rut that we in Because we don't understand these things now, you had Ronald Reagan who came, and he then uh, came with this war on drugs, which to me was just another uh, phrase, a, 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 a covert phrase for war on black people or war on color people, people of color, because the Latino community and the black community were swept in droves and locked up to the prison population triple and that's bullshit people that is bullshit and until we study become more knowledgeable and stick together as a people and do something fucking about it it's gonna continue to go on they just gonna come up with more slick ass ways to put slick ass uh statues and ordinances in place to keep us behind and and and, and i use a phrase all the time that I'm a black man. I was born behind. I'm playing catch up every goddamn day. I play catch up. 
But now I see that, that, that I need to start educating myself more in order to catch the fuck up. Really. So with that being said, to come Bill Clinton. Starts investing in these private prisons. He started putting money in expanding prisons all throughout this country. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Arizona is the only Arizona is the only state that has a law that they must keep a hundred percent occupancy in their prisons, in their state prisons. If they have an empty bed, they have to pay the United States for that empty bed. So, which means if you're in Arizona, I feel for you if you're a person of color. Because they're going to make sure they lock your ass up because they have a 100% occupancy rate. So with these things going on, um, I feel that it's very pertinent, very pertinent, that we, as people of color, educate ourselves. Research it. Start researching. If, if you don't know where to begin, find a Tahaka L. Bay. Go find you one. It's another one out there like him. He's an elder. Find you somebody who has more knowledge than you and get up under them and receive some teaching. Let them point you in the right direction. I appreciate this show today. I really did. Um, Like I said, I'm going to be doing my research because at this moment, I feel like I'm in an unconscious state because I need to elevate my way of thinking. I need to gain more knowledge so I can start finding the truth, so I can compare notes, what I've been taught in school, which is just, I I believe they teach you just how to work for a motherfucker, teach you how to just get out of school and and, and be a goddamn worker, an employee, entrepreneur. So um, I challenge everyone to really go seek some knowledge, really, go seek some knowledge about who you are as a person because I'm going to do it. Um, you can reach out to me at www.thelodegreat.com. Um, the website is under construction, but you can leave your email address and I will hit you back as we are expanding. Or you can reach out to me on all social media sites, any social media sites as Thelo, P H like phone, E L O T H E. G R E A T. That's Philo the Great. So, once again, I'm going to give you these book titles just in case you just joined us. You are listening to Angry Man Antics on the live with Philip Anthony and Valerie Denise. So, let me run these books down to you again, and then we're going to get into a song by Philo the Great. The books are The Exhuming of a Nation by Noble Drew Ali, The Iceman Inheritance by Michael Bradley, The Moors in Spain by Stanley L. Poole, When Locks Cry Out by Horace Butler, They Came Before Columbus by Ivan Van Satuma, Satuma, uh, forgive me for torturing that last name, and Of Water and the Spirit by Melodoma Patrice Somme. So um, I challenge you to uh, go out, uh, purchase these books, rent these books, whatever you have to do, but I'm going to do it. Um, So with that being said, we're going to get into a song by Philo the Great. Uh, This song is, is entitled Positions of Authority. I think it really fits the topic and uh, where we went today on the show. And once again, I do thank Mr. Tahaka L. Bay for his knowledge. I thank all the listeners uh, who have joined us on today and made this show uh, such a great show. Um, So with that being said, once again, I am Angry Man, Philip Anthony, and you can I can be found on www dot philo that's t h like phone e l o t h e g r e a t dot com that is the website. Please go there, leave your e- your email there so I can reach out to you. And also I can be found on all social media sites as the same philo the great 
P H like phone, E L O T H E G R E A T. So with no further delay, here it is Positions of Authority by Philo the Great. It ain't all about a meal, no a deal with how I felt and how I feel And about how many scars I can heal with these skills I've been going through it without music, I probably lose it And despite all my problems like Nike, I just do it Breathe pause in the booth, releasing my truth Reminiscing about the fucked up shit I've been through Not to dwell on the past, but to tell you it's your past I confess that I'm blessed, I believe hell is mad Cause I speak with a positive tone, I bar none And tolerance for bullshit, I don't have none I'm top gun, a hoe or a hater, I'm not one, I am not done We just getting started, this here is fun, writing, no recording Music is never boring, I can make it all night, afternoon and all morning Rock a beat in my sleep, not the freak, fucking for free Those two things fuck me, just come so easy I'm a beast on the beat, a freak in the streets On fleek in the streets, to the week, I don't speak You can find me, walking through the east, talking to my peace If you need me, cause often that's where I be Yes, the killer needs to see The local artists need to stick together in the industry Cause believe it or not, we all we got So sick and tired of hearing about another brother being shot By another black man, my brother, this time to stop We already being hunted by the trigger, happy cops How the hood gon' get better if the guns don't get dropped How the boys gon' be men when the block murdering pops I done seen this shit a lot Somebody gets hot, pull a glock, aim and cut Start shooting up the spot But then we ain't in the end of authority, although you've been ignoring me, I know I be, lyrically shitting on the majority, I promise me, I'll be a memory until the industry don't speak of me, after God sees fit to finish me, position of authority, although you've been ignoring me, I know I be, lyrically shitting on the majority, I promise me, I'll be a memory until the industry don't speak of me, after God sees fit to finish me.